Greetings gardeners. Today I would like to discuss the local squash we call Kabocha pumpkin here in the island. And I have nicknamed it the Godzilla squash because it's completely unstoppable. Right over here, sitting on the bank, we have one that's uh, just about ready to pick. I see another one up there behind me in the field. There's a few of them in here. The squash is rambling all over this area between my mint and other things. I have one here in my hands that I have already picked. The squash is ready when the green starts to turn to tan speckles. So this little squash with a real strange name is neither a pumpkin nor is it a kabocha squash. <laughs> like a lot of the vegetables that we have here on the big island that grow well in this area their history is questionable how they even got here these have not been commercial varieties many of them that are grown locally you know some of the stuff came off from the UH programs and so on uh, other things were brought here um, man named John Mood introduced quite a bit of stuff to the island um, exactly where some of this comes from though is really a question um, this squash as I said obviously it is not a pumpkin okay it nor is it the kabocha of Japan uh, despite being called both here which is very confusing and because it has the word kabocha hooked to it oftentimes if you reference this uh, you're gonna come up with the kabocha squash not this plant I believe what this actually is is probably the calabaza uh, from uh, Latin America. It's possible, it's a good guess at least, that with all the Puerto Ricans that came here uh, in the late 19th century due to the hurricane that destroyed Puerto Rico at that time, it's probable that they were the ones who introduced this squash from the Caribbean to Hawaii. Now it's only a guess and so I'm actually seeking true history out there from someone in Hawaii who might know more about this squash than I do now it's nothing to look at really the first time I saw these things in the local marketplace here I turned my nose up at them because the squashes were all different shapes, all different colors. Mine happens to be a relatively smooth green with a tan stripe, but so many of them are either tan or somewhat orange or gray in color. Many of them have pronounced ribs. Um, quite a few of them are larger, twice the size of the ones I have here. Uh, they're various. And when I saw them in the marketplaces, I went, uh, mongrel squash all oh, crossbred, you know, and uh, wasn't really that excited about mongrel squash. But as time moved on and I started trying to grow squash here in Hawaii, I realized real fast that there is a major pest to the squash here called the pickle worm. And that pickle worm will just make lunch out of almost every variety of squash that I introduced here from the mainland. All of them failed. Most failed without yielding a single fruit. The, the pickle worms just completely destroyed the vines. Um, so I was up visiting a friend in Honoka'a and I was helping her out with an issue on her citrus trees. On the way out Hillary made sure that I had a bag of their coffee, some of their local eggs, and some of the squash that was running amok in her vegetable garden. Oh, now they live oh, over 2,000 feet up over Hanukkah. Uh, it's a fairly cool environment up there, really. And, but the squash was thriving in her environment. Um, and while well, I was being polite, and I said, yeah, sure, I'll take some squash. I mean, I love squash. Another story there too. We'll get to it. But um, well, I brought those squash home, and I cooked them up, and I went, "Oh man, 
This squash is, in my opinion, the finest squash I have ever eaten. That's a big statement, but I mean, my, my history with squash goes way back to childhood. My relatives all grew them on the farms. Uh, I remember laughing hysterically, rolling huge Hubbard squashes in from the garden in Wisconsin, you know, and my aunt telling me, be careful, I'll bruise them as I'm rolling over the squashes in the lawn and laughing. You know, I, I always love squashes. There's so many different colors and shapes, and they're just interesting vegetables. And then again, you know, I... In a cold winter climate, the squash can be put on the shelf and stored for months. And uh, it's still good summer in winter without having to can it. That's why we call them winter squash, because they hold. So I had a deep attachment and a love for squash. Uh, I Maybe I like squash more than a lot of folks I've met, it seems. It's not necessarily the world's most popular vegetable. But... I have eaten most of the major varieties of squash that we grow, you know, from delicatas to butternuts to uh, kabochas to buttercups to hubbards to banana squashes to acorn squashes and on. And I've never run across one that was this good. There is no other quite comparison to this in any of the um, North American squash varieties that we raise. It apparently has a resistance to this pickle worm. The pickle worm can get it flowers on it sometimes, or it will get to the young leaves at the terminal shoot and chew them up, but it can't seem to make penetration into the vine, and that's the key right there. It can't get through the outside of the vine, and because if it was to do that, it would kill the vine. It can only do the tender shoots. It doesn't get inside the squash very easily either, because the shell is fairly hard on it. And that also is another issue because some of the mainland squash, the shell is softer and they'll go right in. They just ruin the squash too. So it has a natural defense against a pest that's terrible here. And in fact, it is the only squash that I have found so far out of at least a dozen that I've tried that actually has a natural defense. I don't need to use sprays or traps to raise this one here. Now, the pickle worm does reduce my yield. They get into some of the immature fruit and they ruin it. But it doesn't stop the plant. So, But the quality of this squash, it, it is um, tender and smooth. It has almost no strings in the flesh. Mmm. It is so wonderfully smooth and creamy. And it's sweet on its own, no sugar added. This squash is sweet. It's absolutely delicious. And really, I've never eaten a better squash. That's a shock because there I was trying to grow all these squashes here and failing miserably and thinking, oh well, I'll have to live on sweet potatoes. Then I found this squash. Man, that is good. Mmm. Mmm. None better. My opinion. Goofy looking little thing. Not very pretty. But a wonderful, wonderful squash. In the marketplace, as I said, these are various. And the various shapes pretty much parallel the various shapes of the uh, Latin American squash known as uh, calabaza. I had tried to grow calabaza at one point in the Midwest and failed because this is a slow and long season tropical squash. It's probably not going to work very well in the northern tiers. I think maybe USDA zone 6 and south, uh, it will probably work. You have enough season for it there. And especially if you live in areas like Florida or Louisiana, you know, Gulf Coast, Texas, places like that, uh, California, this squash should do uh, just fine for you there. Here it's a savior. And the, the various different forms of it I haven't experimented with yet. So now rather than seeing this as a mongrel squash, 
I will be collecting some of the other forms I've seen in the markets in time um, and see uh, you know how, how true they breed to seed. This one breeds true to its form. I have not seen hardly any variations in this squash in the line at all. So we check some of the ribbed ones out and so on. But anyway, that's my theory on where this thing came from. If there's anybody that actually knows the history of the Hawaiian kabocha pumpkin, I would like to hear it. I'm sure somebody out there knows more about this than I do. As I said, I had ignored this thing, thinking, oh, pew, crossbred mongrel squash. Hmm. But then suddenly found out why everybody adores this squash here. So I do have a large stock of seed for this squash, and if there's anybody out there who's interested in trying it, the seeds are on the website, and so you can order them from me. And if there's anybody here living on the island who loves squash and has had problems raising it, this plant is the uh, ticket to success. It will work here. This is gradually what I'm discovering of uh, so many of the rather unusual local vegetable varieties that exist here on the island but don't have a lot of commercial circulation um, actually are some of the best for raising here. So, shop the farmer's markets, look around, you see an interesting pepper or something that somebody's growing, you might want to try to buy it just to get your hands on the seeds. As I say, a lot of the seed is not commercially available. Uh, I have seen a couple of listings for this seed. It is out there, but there are not very many sources other than hand-to-hand. -hand. So many things here in Hawaii travel on the Coconut Telegraph, you know. They don't necessarily hit commercial sources. So, looking around the farmer's markets... It's a real good way to find things here. Aloha, happy gardening, eat more squash, and it's good for you. <laughs>